Now, as promised, we're going to look at how we go about determining the atomic term symbols which are allowed for an atom with a given electron configuration. So let's say we have a carbon atom. Its electron configuration, according to the rules we previously discussed, would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Now we're only going to look at partially filled subshells. If all your subshells are filled, then it's really easy. You just have a singlet S0, 1s0. Um, and that's because any fully filled subshells are not going to have any, any non-zero value of S or L or J. So all your noble gases, that's really easy. It's just going to be a singlet S0. So the only interesting uh, terms which, are, which arise that are different than singlet S0 are for things with partially filled subshells. So that's what we're going to look at here. We have our carbon atom. And we have <clears throat> um, 2p2. So we're looking at the 2p subshell. <clears throat> and we want to look at all the possible ways that we can put two electrons inside of those three spatial orbitals or six spin orbitals in that 2p subshell. So the number of configurations or determinants that we can get for a given number of uh, spin orbitals and a given number of electrons is going to be determined by this. We would have, if we have a number of uh, spin orbitals k, uh, then we would have and a number of electrons n, then we would have k choose n, which for our purposes here is going to be six. There are six spin orbitals for a p subshell, and we have two electrons. So it's six choose two, which is six factorial over two factorial times six minus two factorial. And that's going to give us, let's see, six factorial over two factorial times four factorial. That is going to give us 6 factorial divided by 4 factorial is going to be 6 times 5, and then 2 factorial is 2. 30 divided by 2 is 15. So there should be 15 distinct ways I can arrange two electrons in six spin orbitals here. Three spatial orbitals and the choice of spin up or spin down. And I have those already drawn out here. Uh, we have the cases where both electrons are spin up, both electrons are spin down. Uh, where they're paired together in a single orbital, and then where there one is spin up and one is spin down, and they're in different orbitals. So these 15 uh, <clears throat> configurations, these 15 determinants I have drawn out here, are all possibilities for how you can arrange six, uh, how you can arrange two electrons in six spin orbitals or three spatial orbitals. So the first thing we want to do, once we've drawn out all these possibilities for the partially filled subshells is we want to look at the values of m sub l and m sub s. So m sub l, m sub s uh, we're familiar with, that's just going to be the sum of the electron spins, whether they're spin up or spin down, plus one half or minus one half. So let's get purple here. Okay, these are both spin up, so it's one half plus one half is one. Same thing here, same thing here. These are both spin down, minus one half, minus minus, sorry. Uh, minus one half plus minus one half is minus one, minus one, minus one. In all the other nine, there's one spin up, one spin down, plus one half, minus one half. It's going to give us zero all the way down the line. So for every electron, you just sum up how many are up, spin ups, how many are spin down, and each of them is a value of one half for that spin, giving you the total value of m sub s. Okay, then m sub l. How do we calculate m sub l? Well, we've got our three p orbitals, three choices for p orbitals. One has uh, m sub l plus one, one has m sub l equals zero, one has m sub l equals minus one for its m sub little l uh, for the individual orbital. So we're just going to sum up these individual orbitals all the way down the line. So we have one plus zero gives us plus one, one minus one, 0, 0 minus 1, minus 1, plus 1, plus 0, is plus 1, 1 minus 1, 0, 0 minus 1, minus 1. Then we're going to have 1 plus 1 is 2, 0 minus 0, 0, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2. Then we're going to have down the rest of the line 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 0 and minus 1. 
Okay, so now we've listed out the possible values of m sub l and m sub s for all 15 possible determinants when we have a 2p2 configuration. Okay, next thing we do, we look at what is the maximum value of m sub s. Well, maximum value of m sub s is 1, so that means that our maximum s is also equal to 1. Okay, so that means s can have possible values of either 0 or 1. It can be all the integer values from the maximum value all the way down to 0. Okay, and then we have m sub s, sorry, m sub l. If we look at what is the maximum value of m sub l, the, looks like the biggest value we got here is plus 2. So I have positive 2. That means that the biggest value of L is 2. So that means L can be 2, can be 0, 1, and 2. That is an S, P, and D for our choices of L. Okay, so for S then, for the values of 2s plus 1 for our multiplicity in the top left here, we can have values of either 3 or 1 because we can have values of s which are either 1 or 0. Okay, so that thus far gives us six possibilities for what our possible term symbols are. And they're all the possible combinations of s and l. So our possibilities are singlet s, triplet S, singlet P, triplet P, singlet D, triplet D. Okay, now we want to take all of these possibilities and determine which ones we actually have. And we have to keep going until we have accounted for all 15 determinants here. So let's see uh, what that entails. All right, so what we want to do is start with our largest value of s and largest value of l. So for our triplet d here, that is l equals 2, s equals 1. So in order for there to be a triplet d symbol, we would have to have an m sub l, which equals 2, and an m sub s, which equals 1 for the same determinant. And if you look on here, we don't have any single determinants which have a, a value of 2 for m sub l and, and 1 for m sub s. We have, we have both of those individual cases, but we don't have them uh, both at the same time there. So there's no determinant which matches the criterion necessary to have a triplet d. So triplet d is gone. Okay, then we're going to step down, uh, next step down the line at our singlet d. This is L equals 1 and, sorry, L equals 2 and S equals 0. Okay, so we're looking for an M sub L equals 2 and an M sub S equals 0. And we do have that. We have this determinant here, M sub L equals plus 2, M sub S equals 0. So check, we've got it. So let's uh, go ahead and toss on triplet D here. So we're going to have a triplet D term symbol. All right, now that, sorry, not a triplet D, we have a singlet D. All right, so now that we know we have a singlet D, uh, what do we have to do with this list over here? Okay, so the number of determinants which are going to be represented by a single term symbol is going to be determined by all the possible values of M sub S and M sub L. So we have that L equals 2 and we have S equals 0. So for M sub L we can have plus 2, plus 1, 0, minus 1, and minus 2. And for M sub S, S is 0, so M sub S is just going to equal 0. So we need to find all of these possibilities. With every, every instance of M sub S there has to be this a corresponding instance of M sub L. So there's going to be a total of, for a given uh, term symbol, there's going to be 2s plus 1 times 2l plus 1 total determinants, which are going to get crossed out by that term symbol. 
So in that case, that is 2s plus 1 is 1 when s is 0. L equals 2, 2s plus 2l plus 1 is 5. So we're looking for five determinants with m sub s equals 0 and m sub l equals from 2 to minus 2. And then we're going to cross them out as we go. Okay, so we have 2, 0. Check. We'll cross that out if the color will come up what I want. Okay, 2 sub 0. Cross that out. Um, 1, 0. I'll cross out that one. 0, 0. Uh, minus 1, 0. Sure. And minus 2, 0. Okay, so those five determinants were crossed out by our singlet D term symbol. All right. Now let's look if we have any more cases after that where we have an m sub l equals 2. So there are no more cases left where m sub l equals 2. So then there's no more singlet d term symbols which can be left over. So we are done with singlet d. All right, now we're moving on down to the next highest uh, value of l left and it's in the highest value of s possible. And that's our triplet p terms here. So for triplet p, I move out here, I have L equals 1, S equals 1. So I need an M sub L equals 1 and an M sub S equals 1 in order for there to be a triplet P term present. And I see that right up top here. So I have an 1 and 1. So we are going to have a triplet P term symbol. So I'll add triplet P to my list. Now the same type of procedure for triplet P, we have L equals 1 s equals 1. So m sub l equals plus 1, 0, minus 1. m sub s equals plus 1, 0, minus 1. And our product here for how many determinants we're going to have for a triplet p is going to be 2s plus 1 is 3. 2l plus 1 is 3. So we're looking for nine total determinants. And that's going to be all possibilities of all possible combinations of m sub l and m sub s. All right, so let's get to it. 1, 1, cross it out. We have a 1, 1. 0, 1, 0, 1, check. Minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1. Okay, so we're done with m sub s plus 1. All three of those are connected. Um, let's see, plus 1, minus 1. Okay, we can get that. That's that one there. Uh, 0 minus 1. All right, that'd be this one. Minus 1 minus 1. Check. 0, 0. Don't have one of those yet. There we go. Uh, then we have 0, 0. We already have a 0, 0, so we don't, don't cross out that one. Then minus 1, 0. And that was number 9. And I believe we have all nine term symbols uh, that we were looking for now. And I believe that's appropriate. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, still need a 1, 0. OK, there was the 1, 0. All right, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. All right, we are there. We have all nine determinants for the triplet P state. And that is done. Um, in order for there to be more triplet P's, we would need a case where we have m sub L equals 1, m sub S equals 1. We don't have that, so we're done with triplet P. For singlet P, we would need a case where m sub L equals 1. We don't have that, so there's no singlet P left. For triplet S, we would need a case where m sub S equals 1. We don't have that, so there's no triplet S. For singlet S, our last possibility we would need m sub s equals 0 and m sub l equals 0. And we do have that, so we're going to add singlet s to the list. All right, so for singlet s, our 2s plus 1 is going to be 1, and our 2l plus 1 is going to be 1, because s is, s is 0 and l equals 0 for singlet s. So we're only looking for one determinant. We're looking for m sub s equals 0, m sub l equals 0. That's what we've got. Cross it off the list. Now all 15 are crossed out. So these are our final list of term symbols. One last thing before we go. Uh, if we don't want to include values of j, then we're done. 
uh, we would just have singlet D, triplet P, singlet S. If we want to include J values as well, we would look at those. For D, we would have singlet D. For a singlet D, the only possible value of J is 2. J goes from, remember, L plus S is greater than or equal to J is greater than or equal to the absolute value of L minus S. So we have uh, singlet D2. For a triplet P, we can have uh, L equals 1, S equals 1. So we can have J equals 3. Sorry, J equals 2. Some of those two. Triplet P1, triplet P0. And for a singlet S, L equals 0 and, and S equals 0. So J is going to equal 0. So singlet S, 0. So that's uh, what I just promised in the previous video we would arrive at. If we have a carbon, we look at the exterior unfilled uh, or partially filled subshells. We discover that with the possibilities for all 15 determinants that we can have, we get term symbols that look like singlet D2, uh, triplet P2, triplet P1, triplet P0, and singlet S0. Uh, going through this type of procedure it seems somewhat lengthy, but it's very systematic. And if you follow it for any type of configuration, it will not lead you astray and will lead you to the correct answer uh, just looking at this uh, partially filled outer shell.